Well, friends, welcome to this edition of Spotlight on Ministry, sponsored by the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches USA. And it's our joy to share with you on this wonderful Lord's Day. And we thank God for the privilege to come your way through Facebook. Listen, what I want you to do, I want you to like and share. I want you to start your own watch party. You've got a very special guest one of the pastors of the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches USA Fellowship. We're going to talk to Bishop Gregory Simmons, senior pastor of the Disciples of Christ Baptist Church, and uh, we thank God for him. Bishop, turn the volume down on your phone a little bit so it won't echo if we know how to do that. Uh, but we're going, to, we're going to talk to Bishop in just a moment. And I want you to like and share, join us in the comment section, and so that we can share with the man of God today. All right? Blessings to you. Bishop, thank yes. you for being here. Welcome. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Welcome. So good to have you today. Thank and you. Share with us on this special, special broadcast. Uh, we thank God for how the Lord has brought us and kept us. So, uh, we're just going to jump right in. You just celebrated, what is it, 44 years? Amen, yes. 44 years. 44 <laughs> years. All right. Okay, now you can turn your volume, I think, back up a little bit and talk a little louder. Yeah. 44 years of pastorialship. Yes. Thank God. Right there at Disciples of Christ, am I right? Correct. All Amen. right, all right. Listen, man, I want you to take a moment and tell us about your journey with the church and um, what these 44 years has blessed you uh, to accomplish and how God is blessing Disciples of Christ Baptist Church here in the city of Detroit. Okay. I start, with the help of the Lord, I started to organize the church. In, uh, okay, I need you a little bit louder. I think the volume went down somewhere go ahead go ahead i got you i organized the church in uh in the basement of my house i would you know it's been a journey in the fact that i look back over the years and how i started how i had to uh in my basement i had to go and uh, there was a gentleman who would loan me some chairs and I, I went to my former pastor, Reverend Major Smith of Union Grace Baptist Church. And he's gone on to be with the Lord, but he was instrumental in helping me to organize the church. So I started in my basement and I, I would, he gave me a pew, to, uh, you know, my first uh, pulpit furniture. And I was able to set that up. And, uh, and so I had to go out and pick up the members from the east side, from the west side, bring them all the way back to the east side, preach to them and so forth. And then at the end of the service, I had to take them all the way back. And so that was, it was a good, it, it was a, it was an experience. And uh, we stayed there among ourselves, uh, Family members as well as friends came and got involved with us, and we went to a. We stayed there for about one year, and then God blessed us to go and get our first church. And I can remember, I can recall when I first went in, and I, there was this building. It was like it wasn't a. It was a house upstairs, but it was a a store like thing in the basement. I mean downstairs, and I remember walking in and. I was young and excited, and but my members were looking at me like, because the, the floor was buckled, the ceilings were all messed up and everything, but I had a vision and I was determined to, I think Deacon Hubbard, he was very instrumental in helping me to get the church together and we started from scratch. I mean, he was trying to get a pool, a baptism pool, I remember him setting up full, board, full boards and uh, how we went and got a, a baptism, I mean, a, a swimsuit, um, you know, water out, um, a tub like, and we put that in there, we put a liner and and we had a, 
thing we used to pump the water out and so forth. And everything was, it was just an experience, but I thank God that we was able to, to, to get that. And then from there, we moved to, uh, from 32nd, we moved to 32nd and Deborah Rex. From Deborah Rex, we stayed there and then we moved to Grand River. Uh, Bishop Foster was the, uh, their church uh, was there at the time when we purchased it from them. And uh, we stayed there about eight or nine years. And, and I, recall, I can recall all the churches that have came out of that church. Um, and so we moved from there to where we are located now on Grand River, I mean, on Schaefer and uh, Schaefer and uh, near uh, Schoolcraft. And God blessed us to be able to stay there. You know, despite of all the obstacles and things that we went through, God was still in it. And I can recall uh, back during those times when the church, uh, it was loaning money to churches back then. And I can recall that, yeah, we had got all the way up to $1,800,000 to fix up and, uh, this building, which came, which used to be the unemployment office on Schaefer. And we converted it into a church. And uh, thanks be to God, we were able to, to uh, stay there. But as time would have it, you know, you have to pay for these churches. You know, they ain't giving them away. So when they finally sent the bill, we couldn't afford it. But the, the institution, they weren't loaning money to banks back in those days. But I remember when I, I kept, my wife called me for one day and said, um, Rev. Dana, it put a foreclosure on the church. I said, a what? A foreclosure. And I recall, I remember telling her, just take it down. I didn't know at the time what I was going to do. And I, you know, sometimes as preachers, we, we allow our ego to get the best of us. And so I didn't know if this was my, me on an ego trip or did I really hear from God to, to organize this, I mean, to uh, make this move at this church? Because now they were talking about putting us out of the building. But thanks be to God, uh, the banks called us and said, uh, Mr. Reverend Simmons, we know they're not loaning money up there in Michigan. So do you think you could come up with $100,000? And, you know, naturally I said, yes, we can do that. And at the time, I don't think we had, I, don't, I ain't gonna say two nickels to rub together, but we had just a tab. And I remember uh, we was able to, I think to the bishop, I, he's gone on with the Lord now. He told me that he knew a lady that would loan the church the hundred thousand dollars, but we had to come up with our first twenty-five thousand of it, and we were able to do that over time. And so we were able to give her that money, and she took our money and was able to pay the bank off. And now we were just faced with a balloon payment. Excuse me. And three different times we couldn't meet. We couldn't meet that. That balloon payment. But she kept on giving us extension. And, fi and finally, for the third time, a trying. We was able in uh, 2016 to finally pay the church off completely. And that was just showed me what God can do if we just got the faith. He got the power. And so, do it all. As the writer said, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Man, yeah. What a testimony. 
man, because, you know, we, we've been around a while. We've seen them come and go. And, um, man, I just love coming over to the Disciples of Christ. I, I, I can't call uh, the young lady's name. I call them all young ladies. She said, listen, y'all got to eat when you come over here because we got, we got cooks. We love her to eat. And I said, I, yeah, I ain't telling me nothing I don't know because I thank God for when you first became a part of the of the interdenominational assembly of churches you came came to IAC uh when we before all this pandemic and all this stuff you know disciples of christ is one of our favorite host churches oh, for God. our meetings and uh i mean man y'all we talking about we're gonna have a repass no we had banquets at your church i met them oh god we ain't gonna we ain't gonna take care of no business after we get through eating like this, but we just praise God for your spirit and the and the spirit of your 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 members and your officers and your ministers and all of them who are so supportive. And we thank God for uh, uh, your wife, Lady Simmons, and what she meant to IAC, working with the women over the years and um, mm -hmm. sharing. Uh, and as you just got through celebrating another milestone of ministry yes, and yes. thanking God for how he kept you and brought you now. Uh, let's talk just for a moment about what the Lord laid on your heart when you decided uh, to uh, elevate some people or put somebody in place to help assist you even more uh, in the church, in the ministry, in carrying the load. Talk about that for a moment. Well, you know, like you said, when you're young, you figure you can do it all. Yeah. And I remember, in the, I remember reading in the Bible when Moses was trying to do it all. He was staying up all day and all night, but his, uh, I think his father-in-law, Jethro, came and said, Moses, you're burning yourself out. Why don't you choose, you know, a certain group of men to handle this and so forth? And, but I can recall that it took, it took a heart attack to make me realize mm. that I don't have to do it all anymore. And so and I, I had one heart attack and then I turned right around and had another heart attack. And then I turned around and had a stroke. And that was the ticket that made me realize I, can, I don't have to do it. And so I chose uh, I chose those that to come along and help me. Yeah. One of the hardest things was to, for me to do at that time was uh, to get me an associate minister. And, you know, you look at people, because people will come and people will go, some will stay and so forth. And I looked around and the most faithful minister that I had at that time. And I don't want to minimize all the others because they played a great important role. But Reverend uh, Latrina Crowley was the most faithful member at that time. And plus uh, the church, I allowed the church to vote on who would come in and be my uh, help, my, my assistant. Mm -hmm. And when we got through pulling up the record, they all chose Reverend Crowley. And so I was in, in agreement with that. And so when I made her my assistant, that turned out to be even more so of a blessing. Yeah. And I thank God for her. And so now I preach two Sundays a month. And the other two Sundays, I let the ministers rotate. I let the deacons, as well as the ministers, help with the Bible study yeah. on Wednesday and on Sunday school. I mean, on Sunday. And now, like Dr. King said, longevity has its, its place. Yes, sir. I want to be here for a little while. I want to even enjoy some of the, the blessings on this side. I ain't talking about on the other side. I want to enjoy some of it now. And so... Uh, it was a wise move, as hard as I, I'm being honest, as hard as I tried it not to be, but it was a wise move 
to get somebody to come along and help me. Mm -hmm. So now their help with my deacons and with my ministers have turned out to be ever so much of a blessing in my life. Man, that, that you, you're right. That was wisdom. And thank God you obeyed him and uh, made that happen because sometimes too many leaders, they, like you said, they burn themselves out. And um, you get to see your teaching and your impartation in all of those who been there with you serving and working under your spiritual leadership and your administration evidently they've caught the vision and they got it and they're running with it thank god for that but well, man you are you are certainly a blessed man to have such capable dedicated uh skilled help professional i call them holy ghost field professionals i tell you ain't nothing like having it we're gonna we're gonna have to make a special time to uh to get her on with you one day in one of these settings and because I think uh, as, as we look at the landscape of the church, uh, time always brings about a change. And then there's a changing of the guard. There's transitions we go through and uh, it, it's called promotion. And then there's uh, passing the mantle and, and succession. Uh, and that's biblical that, that we be prepared for those times when they come. Even though we, the Bible said, be thou faithful unto death, but you ain't got to die being the pastor. You you can you can still preach, and, and you let others go, and and God can use you as as a father figure in the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm telling all these things around here. Listen, I, I've been in church all my life. I'm, I'm in a father mode now, and and I do as much teaching as I can, even online and whenever I get a chance, because this generation that uh, we're going to leave ministry to need to be thoroughly equipped. And the only way they're going to get it is on the job experience. You, you know, we can talk to them in a classroom and, and online and do Facebook and do Zoom meetings and trainings. That, that's good. But at the same time, they need to actually run a service, preach a sermon, teach a class. And man, I, I follow you. Sometimes I have an opportunity to peep in on all of the churches during the week and on Sundays. And uh, just this past week, I think it was Reverend Dawson did the lesson, I believe. And then your deacons and everybody. What, what a blessing to have such capable people who are biblically sound and trained and uh, don't mind sacrificing and serving. Uh, we want to bless them today and thank God all they do to help their pastor mm -hmm. and the service of the Lord. What a blessing, man, I'm telling yes, you. Lord. Thank God mm -hmm. for that. Uh, and as you now uh, have have delegated uh, some some things to, to your, your deacons and, and now you have an assistant, somebody to help you with the, the, the ministerial uh, uh, job that you got to do to service the church and make sure the members are well taken care of. Uh, are, you, are you still going to be available? Like if you get a call and somebody need that wisdom from Bishop Simmons to come by their church, some of these younger pastors might pull on you, you know, just for some expertise and wisdom. Amen. Right now, I'm in a, you know, John, John Maxwell once said, build your, build, make your life a legacy for people. Meaning yeah. that, you know, it says Methuselah lived to be 969 years old. And that's all it wrote behind that he lived. And I think your life should mean something where you can impart, like you said, impart in the people your life, because you live on through what you have imparted into the lives of people and the teachings and the things that you can impart into the people, even that they can learn and get stronger and better. And so that is what I wanna do. I remember reading where Mother Teresa 
who was about serving the people, she died, but yet her legacy lived on because there were other nuns that were coming up and, and behind her. And I think that's what we should, as pastors and whatever, we should live a life so that people can come up behind us and live the things that we have taught and imparted into their lives so that we can live on long after we've gone. They can always revert back and say, I remember when Pastor Simmons said this, or he taught me this, or whatever. And that way, you 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 develop and you live on even through your your teaching and preaching. And so that's one of the things I wanted to impart into uh, the ministry, as my as the deacons and things. I want my life just to be more than just I lived and I died. But I wanted to be so that people were blessed by the by the things that I imparted in their lives and the things that I've learned also. And so I just want to be a blessing to teach my things that I've learned and experienced and so forth. Yeah. Be a blessing in their lives. And that's what I, I'm aiming to do. And while I'm saying this, you know, Bishop Woods, I can say this. I appreciate you, you know, when the mantle you picked up the mantle and you kept it going. And you've been an instrument, a blessing in the IAC organization. And we all appreciate you and let you know that uh, your service is a blessing to all of us. And I just want to let you know. Well, thank you. you thank you, life. man. You know, I just believe that whatever God puts in us and uh, sometimes we don't see it all at one time but then over time and after a few experiences and going through and coming out and going through and coming out he puts more in us only to get it out of us and guess what it's not for us it's for somebody else all right i learned that i learned that uh and so i act was just is always been dear to me and i appreciate when bishop foster came in and and uh, he carried it, and, uh, uh, and then we, we've, we've had some bumps in the road, but, but who don't have bumps in the road? Like things go awry sometime, and uh, you got to come back around full circle and uh, do what God asked you to do. And um, it was my joy to know that the pastors want, to, want this, want this kind of uh, camaraderie and fellowship uh, to do some things corporately together to share with each other and to uh, make it meaningful not only to our individual selves but we pray that the anointing and the benefit like the Bible say it, it runs from from the head down to Aaron's beard and down to his skirts so so whatever uh, I act is to the pastors. We pray that that uh, overflow goes right into their membership. Amen. The things that we want to try to accomplish for ministry. Speaking of that, man, um, uh, all of you that uh, since we've been back, we've done our convocations. We had to we had to get used to this thing called Facebook Live and YouTube and social media broadcasting and uh, uh, doing church uh, virtually and our convocation uh, when we had to do it. I think that was 20, 2020, the first one we did once I came back. Mm -hmm. We had to do virtual stuff and you have been a part of that and uh, other pastors, lectures and preachers. Man, it's been something. It's been something. It's been a journey. It's been a journey. Trying to get used to how to operate this stuff and uh, uh, get our members and everybody acclimated. But thank God, uh, uh, things are as well as they are. And they're getting better. They're getting better as uh, long as we stick and stay and uh, keep our hands to the plow. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see the goal. We'll reach the goal. And uh, now we're, we're on the, on the crust of, of a new venture. One of the things that the Lord had given me, and uh, I'm sharing it with all of the pastors, 
uh, something for our churches to benefit from, something from the pastors the, and the ministry churches, that we do a corporate evangelism campaign, a right. uh, global outreach ministry. Through this medium, we have the ability now uh, because it's so dangerous going door to door and going in the streets trying to witness, even though uh, there's special times we can do that uh, with protection and with the right uh, of crew going with us. I don't recommend in these days nobody going out there alone, okay? Well, matter of fact, Jesus didn't send nobody out by himself in eight day. Right. He at least sent them two by two. So there, there's so much ministry to be done, not only here in the streets of Detroit, but the, a, a whole state of Michigan, the, the nation, the United States, and even around the world. And this, this thing called Facebook, social media, allows us to do that from right wherever we are in the world. We can speak like we are now. This, this can go all over the world globally mm -hmm. and so tonight we're going to launch uh, the interdenominational assembly of churches global ministry campaign okay. evangelism for every church where we're going to every church is going to rotate and be highlighted uh week to week i'm going to kick it off tonight and um everything that we do and we want our general public to know uh, that we have our covenant partners, faith covenant partners campaign for IAC. But uh, I'm setting it up where all of the pastors, all of the churches can not only benefit spiritually, but uh, whatever monetary gifts people want to sow into ministries and to our different churches, the members along with family and friends, we're going to have opportunity for you to do that each week. It'll be a different pastor on every Sunday night at 7 p.m. And you'll have the privilege to get a view of who they are, where their church is, and their ministry, and what all they're doing uh, for God through their ministry, for the community. And you'll get a chance to hear them teach, preach, and just witness a great time in fellowship through this medium of social media. Uh, we, we're going to be sharing on WVTC uh, Radio, and it starts at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. So y'all be looking out. Look out. Go to WVTC uh, Radio Detroit. Uh, go to their Facebook page. You'll find us there at 7 p.m. And, of course, the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches USA page will be there as well. But we thank God because uh, the Disciples of Christ ministry, uh, uh, your church, and all of the other, uh, uh, when, it, when, when, the, when the rotation comes to Disciples of Christ, we want everybody to be excited. And we, we're asking everybody, you know, to chime in, like, and share through thumbs up and hearts and all of that. Let us know that you're there. Uh, send your prayers and comments. Uh, for all of the pastors that are going to be on each and every week. And uh, it's going to be a blessing. I'm just looking for God to just increase it and to multiply it. And again, like I said, every church. So we need all the IAC churches that are listening, members and pastors. I know it's the holiday weekend, but it's only going to be for a short time, just for an hour. Uh, and, and if you can't stay the whole hour, just chime in and then uh, be a part to witness uh, what God is uh, doing with us, in us, and through us. So I'm excited about it because I believe that so as we do in obedience to what God has requested, he's opening up doors that no man can shut. I believe that with all my heart. So this is a great ministry opportunity. So y'all just get ready for 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. Well, Bishop, this is what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. Man, you got such a great testimony. There's no way we can do it in these few short moments. I, I want you to, to speak a word of wisdom and encouragement to this generation of young pastors and 
those that are not pastoring yet, and even some of the young new bishops that are out there, uh, uh, they need guidance and they need to understand it, it's not a gig I mean, it's it's ministry and there is there is maintenance to ministry. Uh, we got to walk in integrity. I mean, it's so much that yeah. goes into this and it's not about making a name. It's not about the, the fancy custom suits or the cars or the houses. It ain't got nothing to do with none of that. But what profit the man to gain the whole world and then lose his soul? So I want you to just take a moment as the Lord leads you, just speak words of wisdom uh, to those in ministry. Praise the Lord. One of the things that anytime you get ready to birth something into the world, and you know, when I look back at those 44 years ago, I remember marking God because I that was one of the things that I spoke to the Lord. I never want to start in a storefront church. That was one of the things I, I just made it plain. I, and if the Lord took me a little lower than the storefront because he put me in my basement of my house to start. So I, I had to go from a basement up to a storefront, to a church. And so this has really been a journey. And one of the things I've come to realize that when you're birthing something in the world, it's a struggle. It's, and a lot of times, I remember when the, when the first time I got called, to, I told the pastor I was getting ready to, I was going to pastor. And he did everything he could to try to discourage me. And so at the end, I told him, I said, well, you know, I respect you, what you say and everything. But I know God called me to this. And I'm going to fulfill what I, what he put in my heart. And when I said that to him, he reached out and shook my hand. And he said, Simmons, I, I want to give you my congratulations. I did all I could to try to talk you out of it. But you stood your ground because in this ministry, things are going to come up against you. People are going to say all manner of things about you and so forth. But you, you have got to stand your ground. You have got to stand your ground and do what you have. And that's what I was able to do. I was determined despite of all the obstacles. And you, if you are starting something, don't go in it with the illusion that everything gonna pop off and you're gonna know most more than not, everything's gonna be difficult and so forth. But if you are determined and you know that you heard from God to do this thing. God will manifest it through you. Like I preached this morning when I talked about uh, God will bring you through, uh, give you peace in the midst of a storm. And the thing I was saying, well, why does God allow storms? God allows storms to come in our life so that we can grow. So that we can grow. You don't get growth from everything being easy and a flowery bed of ease. You can't grow in that. Where your growth comes is in your trials, in your tribulations. When you feel like your back is up against the wall, but you still, as the writer said, I look to the hills from which cometh my help, because all my help comes from the Lord. When you can stretch out and just Tell the Lord, I like I think it was Jacob said, Lord, I'm not gonna let you go until you bless me. And you just gotta stay 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 the course. When God has put it in your heart, stay the course and watch God do bigger and greater things in your ministry. And at the end of the day, you can say, To God be the glory. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. That That is that is so awesome uh, for sharing that those words of wisdom. And uh, like the Bible say, we got many teachers, but not many fathers in this day. And I, I always pray for this generation that they they will see the worth of sharing and finding themselves 
a father figure, a mentor, somebody that they can trust and go to because a lot of them are gifted and talented. Mm -hmm. But I'll never forget, years ago, uh, Bishop Andrew Merritt, Straight Gate, uh, a church here in the city, said to me, Woods, you know, be sure you don't be one of those who talents and gifts can take you everywhere where your character can't sustain you. All right. And i never forget those words from the man of God because we see that so often. I, I get so... I get so heartbroken when I um, hear about things happening needlessly in churches with pastors and scandals and all of the stuff that go on, you know. Just like in the Word of God, the, the Bible said that a bishop should be blameless. It didn't say you wouldn't be accused, just don't be guilty. <laughs> that's, that's what he said. <laughs> Because like you said, man, they will hang your name out on every sign post and they will talk what they know and talk what they don't know. And, and, and most of the time, they're so good at making it up. So, oh man, we just bless you today. And I pray that those of you who hear what the man of God has said, that you will take these words of wisdom and, and let it be a blessing to you. Oh, here she is in the comment session, uh, Reverend Latrina, right? Latrina Crowley. Amen. Yeah, she says, hi, Pastor Simmons. Bishop Woods, thank you for sharing with us today. But uh, it's, an awesome, it's an awesome responsibility in these days now more than ever before because uh, this generation is facing a whole lot of temptation way above the scale that we faced. I mean, just walking the street, going to school, going and working in the corporate world. I mean, it's so much going on. Mm. The world got a program that's well, finely tuned mm. to get us. I mean, between television, cable television, between YouTube and Facebook, the movies and the music and uh, liberalism. Everybody got talking about freedom of speech and freedom of this and freedom of that. The world is going crazy, man. Yes. And we need some balance. But thank God uh, for the remnant of God's people who are the called out. And uh, sometimes I used to wonder why we got to live in the world. Why God want us to be separated? He just called us to come out from among them, you know. Mm -hmm. you, 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 can't, you can't eat at the same table uh, uh, with devils. You, you can't be a partner to a lot of this stuff. And sometimes it means, you know, speaking in love, the message of Jesus Christ to family and friends. And sometimes they don't want to hear it, but... Um, uh, we can't be responsible if they reject. We just got to tell the truth. Uh, my scripture, Bishop, that is keeping me mm -hmm. and helps me feel like I got a right because I've been called and licensed and ordained to do what I do is when Paul talks to the Galatians in chapter 4, verse 16. He asked the question, am I therefore become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. Yeah, you People don't want to hear sound doctrine no more. And that's why we certainly celebrate you and your ministry for being the preacher that you are, the teacher that you are, the shepherd and pastor, and the stellar bishop in the Lord's church that you lead by example. So we just wanted to highlight you and celebrate you today for a little while. On this holiday weekend, we're looking forward to celebrating another, what is it, Independence Day, as they call it. Excuse me. <laughs> and we want everybody to be safe. Yes. And again, uh, if you're not busy, stay with us. Come back at 7 p.m. for our inaugural broadcast of the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches USA uh, 
outreach, global outreach ministry, okay? Thank you all for joining us. Bishop, I appreciate you taking time today, thank man. You, thank you. I know you prepping the ribs and uh, getting everything all ready to throw on the grill. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. So listen, saints, we love you and we thank God for you. We're going to pray and we're going out. Father, we thank you now for this privilege of fellowship. Thank you. We thank you for the man of God and how you chosen him and you used him and you're using him and thank you for all that he is to the body of Christ and the leader that he is to the designated church disciples of Christ God thank you God for the people that you have blessed him with thank you for his spirit and love for your people as their leader and shepherd now I ask God that you will bless him and his wife his whole entire household if there's a need among them supplied now in the matchless name of Jesus whatever the vision is now going forward God for the ministry God I pray that you will supply the need God yes. that the people will line themselves up with what God is speaking to the leader and God I pray that as you've given vision we thank you in advance for provision so we pray Psalms 90 and 17 upon Bishop Simmons life now Lord and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon him Yes, establish the work of thy his hands upon him yea the work of thy hands establish thy wit so God we pray that you shall continue to go before him make easy and successful his way and also God whatever his hands touch cause mm -hmm. it to prosper in Jesus name this is your servant's prayer in the master's name of the Lord Jesus Christ we pray amen and thank amen. God all right Bless your bishop, man. We'll talk this week, and we're looking forward to 7 o'clock. I'm so excited. Can't stop talking about it. All so right. uh, bless you all, and I command the blessings of the Lord to overtake you. That is my prayer for you today until we meet again next time. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.